Blind Beauty. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. Theodore Roosevelt. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Blind Beauty. What we are going to do today is I'm going to take you through putting makeup on for wearing glasses. I know not everybody wears glasses, and that's okay. I don't wear glasses typically. These are just some little reading glasses that I use. Sometimes if I'm trying to do really small print work for very long, they don't help a lot, but they do help some. But I thought I would do a makeup tutorial that is geared towards helping those that wear glasses, wear them and feel more confident in doing so. So, and I am working with the lighting. I have my overhead light turned off right now and I have a couple lamps on me. So let me know in the comments down below if you like this lighting better than my other lighting. You know, because I'm still fiddling with everything and figuring everything out. Uh, my hair keeps wanting to get in my face too, so. But hey, it's at, a, at that awkward stage that it doesn't stay behind my shoulders. And But anyway, let's jump into it, shall we? First thing I'm going to take is this uh, e.l.f. Blemish Control Primer. And I'm not going to put it all over the face. Well, actually, before even doing that, I want to show you another tip here. You take the e.l.f. You can get these from the Dollar Tree, at least at mine you can. e.l.f. Shine Eraser Oil Blotting Sheets. You take one of them, at least, and blot around your nose. Now, I do recommend having a clean face, but if you did use a moisturizer that might be a little extra oily, still taking one of these and blotting that oil off your nose area will help. And this is going to be rather lengthy possibly, so I say grab you a bowl of popcorn or something like that and just chit, chit chat with me. But I'm going to take that blemish control primer, just put a tiny bit on my finger here. And then I'm going to focus this in particularly on the nose and in my T-zone because that is where I tend to get most oily. This lip balm, I'm not used to something that slippery on my lips, so it feels awkward talking with it. So usually I'll use like the EOS balm before I'm doing makeup like this. But hey, let's just roll with it, roll with it. I'm going to take the NYX First Base Primer. And by the way, all these products that I'm going to be using today, you can get from either Walgreens, Walmart, Ulta, like a combination of all of them. So, but this is the NYX first base. I'm going to just do a quick spritz all over my face. Since I got my primer on, let's chat about why you even want to wear a foundation, concealer, that type of item. And forgive me for pushing my hair back. It's just driving me nuts because it's, it's warm in here right now a BB cream or primer or BB cream or foundation and concealer it helps to mask some of the redness that glasses may leave because I know even for me and I don't wear them that long sometimes there's little red marks that will appear where the glasses sit on my nose and then because I do wipe my nose so much I'll get little red spots around my nose as well and the foundation and concealer helps hide that especially if I set it properly okay now then let's go ahead and since that is nice and dry that uh, primer spray I am going to take my Maybelline dream pure BB cream and this is in the shade medium deep and I'm gonna put some of that on the back of my hand, but first I'm gonna shake it up. Anytime you use a liquidy product, it is recommended that you shake it, and I didn't shake this beforehand. And what I'm going to be using to put, apply this is my Miracle Complexion Sponge by Real Techniques. All you do with this is you, this is an orange looking sponge with a beveled edge here. You take this and you go get it wet, good and wet. And then what you do is you just dip it in your foundation I had to wring out some of the excess water. 
but I put way too much foundation on my hand, but that's okay. You know, well, BB cream rather, not foundation. Well, it is my foundation today, so. <laughs> but I dip it in there, like so. I, I use the beveled edge. Some people may want to be using the tip, like the little pointed tip, but I like the beveled edge better. And then you just stamp it on and basically blend it out by bouncing it all over the face, including down my neck a little bit, you know, all that. So that's what I'm going to be doing here, but I'm not going to go very much on the actual nose area, like right here on the nose, between the nose and eye. I'm going to be very light. That will be the last area that I do because I don't want as much product on that area. And I'll explain why here in a moment. Now then, since I did the, mainly the outer parts of my face, we are going to go in now and do the nose area. I did just a little strip down the middle mostly and a little bit on the edges, but tiny bit. I just went in, did a little tap on what was left on my hand here, like on the area that didn't really have much. And now we're just gonna go real lightly on the edges here. And you just work it in Make sure you got that inner corner area too, and the eyes. But then I'm going to take <clears throat> an area of the sponge that does not have any ex extra, po extra product on it, and kind of just make sure I've gotten what I can blend it in. If you can tell here, what I just did, I took the edge that doesn't really have anything right there, and I was like dotting it, you know, bouncing it on my nose area. And nothing's really coming back off. So that's a good thing. You don't want excess product to be coming out. Now what I like to do is give that a little bit of time to sink in. Now you can use whatever foundation you want to, but I would recommend everything I was reading at least says use an oil-free foundation of some kind because you don't want excess oil on your nose area especially but we're gonna fix that too because I am I tend to get very oily in my nose and t-zone area anyway but what we're gonna do now is I'm going to take my if I can spot it here uh, my mate uh, not Maybelline NYX HD concealer no not no 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 my bad it's not the NYX HD concealer it is the Maybelline neutralizer concealer in the instant age rewind in neutralizer it's a yellow tone concealer whenever you're wearing glasses I don't know if you noticed with me but whenever you're wearing glasses sometimes it can create a shadow I know in this lighting it might not be the best but it can create a darkness under your eyes that isn't always flattering in my opinion let me show you what it looks like with my glasses on see that darkness that comes up here especially if I pull my glasses down a little bit, there's a little bit of a shadow that comes there. That's where the neutralizer, I believe it's that shade. It's hard for me to read the bottom of these things. It's the yellow shade Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. But you take that and you put that in a small triangle. Now I'm not doing major highlight like a huge triangle to the end of my nose, but I'm just doing a, like, it'll go down to like, about halfway down my nose basically the side of my nose where that crease is I don't want to go on the actual side side of my nose but right after that crease I go about halfway down well three quarters of the way I guess is what I want and then right back up to the outer corner then we just fill it in I'm just dotting it in I'm not going nuts you know 
I'm just taking the sponge applicator that is on here and doing that. No, I know it's not, you know, just right, but that'll be fixed. Give me a minute, give me a minute. You know, some, I know sometimes people are like, hey, you need to fix that now. Well, with this product, luckily you do have a little bit of time to work with it. You don't have to go right in and, okay, I guess I am making a bigger triangle. And that's one thing with makeup, whatever you do, you can always fix it by blending. I mean, I know I look completely nuts right now, probably. Big old yellow triangles under my eyes. Not, you know, not too horrible, but, you know, it still looks a little, a uh -uh, little bit out there. Now, I'm taking the pointed edge of that sponge we were using, and I'm dabbing that in. But whenever I'm doing a makeup look, I try to, or for glasses at least, if I'm going to be wearing glasses, even sunglasses this will work with, by the way. If you're going to be wearing sunglasses, this can work. But you do a brightness there. Because I've done this before whenever I was just going to wear sunglasses and not real glasses. But you want to add a little bit of brightness and make sure it's well blended. You don't want like a harsh line because that is very common from what I understand for people that can't see. I know I had that issue. Whenever I was first starting out doing makeup, I wouldn't get my concealer blended so it was like whoop, one big old straight line of product, of concealer, of eyeshadow, of whatever because I didn't blend. I didn't know how to blend. But that's where to blend, all I'm doing is I'm like tapping and I do kind of like a tap and drag motion, especially at the edges. Now you can even take that same concealer and go on the lids for an eye primer if you want to, but we're not, I'm not using concealer for my actual primer today. But since the face is pretty much, you know, done liquid wise, I'm going to take this Makeup Revolution Luxury Banana Powder right here and I'm going to use my if I can spot it here uh, yeah right here this is a little Real Techniques eyeshadow brush it's like the really big eye brush I mean look how big that is compared to my eye it takes up like my entire lid space you know from lash line to crease at least and I tapped a little bit of that banana powder into the lid and then I'm just going to dust this on where we just put that concealer. Now using a small brush like this that I just used, to me, really helps get it exactly where it needs to go rather than having it all over the face. And I use this brush because I'm going to be using it here in a moment as well. Now then, one thing I like to do sometimes is I'll take that same sponge that we used to blend it and I'll go ahead and tap that in just to kind of make sure it's good and pushed into that the skin, the powder. Because I really want my under eye to be nice and set and nice and bright whenever I'm wearing glasses. <laughs> but yet I don't want to look like a complete reverse raccoon. I mean, I'm, I'm just being real with y'all now. But let me show you what it looks like here with the glasses now. And yes, we'll be doing progress checks throughout. Ah, almost poked myself in the eye. Now see, that's a little bit lighter under there now. And apparently I got some powder on my glasses, which I'll clean those up here in a moment. But now then what I'm going to take is I'm going to take my L'Oreal True Match powder and I'm in the shade W4. Well, this is actually a little light for me, really and truly, right now, but that's okay. And I'm going to start out with that same brush that we were using, the... Uh, Real Techniques brush, but first I'm going to take one of those oil blotting sheets 
Now you don't have to do this step, but I find, especially on the nose area, it does help to get whatever extra oil from that foundation or whatever you put on up. That way it's not likely to break down as much, at least in my opinion. I found that you can do this all over your face even and it helps to really set your makeup even more. But I take this powder, I swirl in, tap it off, and then I'm just going to go mainly, I'm going to focus this right on the edges of the nose where the glasses sit. Whenever you put them on, notice where it, they sit on your face. And then that's the area that you want to make sure is well powdered with even a translucent powder like the uh, Essence Made for Matte or the even the even Elf has a translucent matte powder, <laughs> pressed powder. I've heard that pressed powder makes all the difference in the world. I don't know for sure, you know, but I'm kind of just I swept it on and then now I'm just taking it and like patting it on. Now the elf one, you can look cakey. I will warn you about that. If you press it on like I just did with that, you can look very cakey. Now then, I'm going to take a big fluffy brush here. This is one by Shani. And I just went in and swirled it around. Now I'm just setting the rest of my face with this. Well, it's not a big fluffy fluffy brush, but you know, it's big enough for me. <laughs> Size don't always matter. Quite the contrary to most people's beliefs, but it don't always matter, y'all. <laughs> and then I definitely get the tip of my nose because, you know, I don't like to look extra shiny there. Go down my neck where I put all the BB cream. Basically just setting my entire face is what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright. Because I don't want to look extra shiny anywhere whenever I'm wearing glasses. Because usually with my glasses, the reading glasses or whatever, there's some shine coming off anyway whenever light hits me. So I don't really need extra shine to my face. <laughs> but, you know. Hey, if you like an extra highlight, I say go for it. Now that I'm going to take, and I know I say now then a lot, but this is the e.l.f. Uh, blush and bronzing kit in St. Lucia, right here. We're going to take the blush side that whenever you're looking at it the right way up, it is going to be on the left hand side, and then you got the bronzer on the right. First we're going to take the bronzer, and I'm using the actual I think this is the e.l.f. bronzing brush, believe it or not. I started out contouring with this brush here, and that's what we're going to do. We are actually going to contour today. Not a heavy duty contour, like not completely chiseled, and people are mowing in the background. I decide to film and people start mowing. What? But oh well. Let's, like I said earlier, let's just roll with it, y'all. Let's roll with it. Alright. I'm going to swirl this in my contour, well in my bronzer as they call it, but this is a matte bronzer. Whenever you're contouring, I prefer to do matte colors, but I get it on the brush and then I use the side of it and do my contouring. I do have a contouring video coming up. I believe I'll have it up this Friday if possible, uh, as well as more beginner beauty series videos. I already have several on like foundations and powders and whatnot, but you know, I've got a contouring one coming up Friday. And I go about to where the corner of my eye, where if I drew a line straight down, about where that ends. And I'm just kind of blending this in and up. I go, I tend to go up. I like to lift it up and get it on the cheek the back part of the cheekbone just a little bit. Cause I don't know, I seem to like that. <laughs> I mean, and you can take it down the nose and do whatever you want to, but I don't like to have a whole lot of product besides what I already have on there, on the nose. You want, from what I understand, you want as little product on that area as possible. Cause then there's not as much for it to 
cause excess oil. And then what I do is I go on the jawline at the temples and at the hairline, the top of the hairline basically. And then I bring it up to the contour from the bottom as well. And then you can even take the brush and do your neck and whatever contouring you want to do. Now that's a video, I, I didn't go into contouring your collarbone and all that in that contour video. But that'll be an intermediate level <laughs> contour. Intermediate or advanced, one of the two. But that's one video I have coming up Friday. And then I've got some of my makeup collection coming this uh, week as well. Tuesdays and Thursdays until I get it completely shown to y'all is going to be makeup collection videos. <laughs> Alright, now there we, there we go. We got my <coughs> contour done. Right there. Now, my left eye is my bad eye, so sometimes my left side, I think it'll be your right side, won't look the best. But that's partly because I can't really see out of my left eye. I have very little vision. So, you know, that's okay. You just go with what you can do. If you can't see it all, that's okay too. You just can have somebody check your makeup if need be. Now me, unfortunately, I don't have anyone around me to check mine besides y'all. So now I'm going into that blush shade and I do it right on the apple of the cheek and work it back. Plus, since this is supposed to be more of a back to school type video, you know, not everybody wants to look all glowy and all that for school anyway, but if you do, then you can always use something like the e.l.f. illuminating palette and do a subtle highlight. You can go huge glow if you want to, but me, like I said, I don't like an extra shine to my face, so I gotta take a coffee break. <laughs> Y'all are really getting ready with me, by the way. Alright, now then, we got the face done, pretty much, so why don't we set it real quick. I'm going to take the Makeup Revolution Pro Fix Oil Control Fixing Spray. Mine's got a little bit of foundation because I had foundation hands whenever I used it last time. And yes, I tend to go a little heavy with my fixing spray but it feels so good whenever I'm so hot it really does y'all whenever you're hot get you a good fixing spray or a primer spray or you know even a like the L'Oreal Hyaluronic uh not Hyaluronic Hydra Fresh toner I've got some of that in the bathroom in a little spray bottle that I used to use to help set my makeup and kind of refresh it as well but you can also use the elf matte magic you can use any kind of thing like that but you want to make sure, especially, that you set that nose area. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that, I just did another quick spritz, because I'm taking that beauty sponge I was using, the Miracle Complexion, and tapping in that spray into my nose area especially, like bouncing it around, because I've heard that if you tap it in, it really does actually lock that stuff in more. I don't know how true that is. You know. I ought to try doing a half tapped, half not thing and see. <laughs> Would y'all like to see like the You Be The Judge series where I do something and because I can't always see things but maybe y'all can. I don't know. I'm using my iPhone 6S Plus though to film so not the best thing for getting best quality, but, you know, uh, but like a foundation head to head, it's like, I can't really tell if one is breaking down more than the other, because I can't always tell whenever things are breaking down, if it's just slightly at least. Now, if it completely wears off, oh, heck yeah, I can tell that. All right, but I went ahead and tapped that in, and I went ahead and did it all over the face just because just because I wanted to. <laughs> now I'm taking the Essence I Love Stage Primer, eye primer, and I'm going to put that on my lids, and then I'm going to blend that all the way up to the brow.
since that's well blended, I had to get my charger because my phone told me it was dying. I'm using the CoverGirl True Naked Nudes palette here. This is supposedly a dupe for the Urban Decay Naked palette. Now, I'm not going to go too crazy with this because I'm wanting it to be more of an everyday type look anyway. So, now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that brush we were using and I'm going to go into this second shade here which is kind of like a eggshell, like a matte color. Well, light tan actually is what it looks like to me. I don't know. My vision is not the best. If y'all know me then you know that I'm legally blind and my lighting ain't the best in here anyway, so yeah. But I'm using that same brush we were using for concealer and on the nose. The Real Techniques, um, okay. This brush is the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease brush. And that's what I'm using. And I'm putting this all over the lid, all the way up to the brow. Now I've seen different reviews about what you do, what you don't do with glasses. Now I'm taking you through what I personally like. Okay. You can do whatever you want to do. If you want to do a crazy wild eye, like a like take this, well not crazy, but like take the fifth shade in this palette and do that all over your lid. That's fine. More power to you. Now for me, Especially for an everyday type look, I like to go more bright eye, bushy tail. Especially since, you know, there may be some darkness due to the glasses. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Eco Tools. I'll be using the Eco Tools Eyeshadow Duo set that is four brushes pretty much in one set. And I'm going to be using the fluffy, well not fluffy, but the more flat long end of the brush that has the angled end on the other end and we're going to go into that third shade which is a pinky a bright pinky shade and we're going to put that on the actual lid space from the lid to the crease area take this and I'm just kind of sweeping this on not focusing as much with it because that first shade we used is going to kind of act as our highlight as well so then I'm going to take the next shade that's right next to it which is the fourth shade it's a medium tone brown and I'm using that same brush now you can use elf brushes for this you could use whatever you want to and I'm going to take that and put it on the outer like quarter to third of the lids and I'm going to put that in the crease as well. Kind of like doing windshield wiper and buffing motions both. So that's what I'm doing now. There we go. Now I'm going to take a combination. I'm going to go back and forth between the shade we were just using and the next to last shade, which is a deep brown. I'm going to mix those two, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to show you how I'm doing it here so that you can get an idea. All right. We go dip it in the lighter brown shade, then we swirl it, you know, basically 
swish it back and forth in each shade a couple times. And I tap it off. You can tell this is a fairly powdery palette. And I'm going to focus this more on the outer quarter to third of the lid. And that's pretty much it. Just barely bringing it in the crease, maybe about a halfway in the crease. But then it will be windshield wiper motions wanting to focus it. And we are still using the same brush, by the way. See, all that does is add a little bit of definition to the eyelids, you know, it really does help to define the eyes. Alright, now I'm going to take the Wet n Wild H2O Proof Mascara, or not mascara, liner. <laughs> I'm taking the H2O Proof Liner in black. Now you could use a brown liner, you could use a whatever color you want to, but from everything I've learned liner really helps your actual eyes behind your glasses pop now this is a liquid liner for those that are not familiar with it it is a liquid liner with a very fine tip brush let me show you what it looks like here i mean that is how little that tip is there and then i try to stay as close to my lash line as i can to do this and really I don't even wing mine out. I'm still learning how to do wings and all that, so I don't usually wing. But I stay as close to the lash line, but I make sure to go all the way to the end of the lash line, but not beyond. Now, I don't always start or go to the very inner corner. Sometimes I'll leave like a quarter of it or a fifth of it out because of my eye shape. But. You know what, if you're bad with liner like I am, you can take a brush like this angled brush that's on the opposite end of the brush that we were using, and I'm going to go into the black that's in that palette, get some on my brush, tap it off, and then just kind of smudge, well not really even smudge, but go over that liner real lightly. I know some people might not like to do that and that's okay you know but I'm going to since I did do that I'm going to take some of that brown color right below it but that is a way that you can fix eyeliner all right now I took some of that darker brown shade that's right next to it and went on the lower lash line about halfway in I tried to get as close to my lashes as I could because I don't want it to look too dark under there after all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other eye real quick and I'll try to make it match my right eye. My left eye I usually don't have as much trouble with. Do y'all have that issue where one eye is easier for you than the other? Alright, 
I got some on my lower lash line. I don't know if y'all can see that or not, which I didn't mean to do. But first, we gotta fix that upper lash line a little more before it completely sets. So, and it probably is already set, but we're still gonna try. I'm gonna take that same black shade I was using on the other eye, and we're gonna fix that real quick. I mean, can y'all can y'all even tell that I got liner on my lower lashes, lower lash line? To me, it just looks too goth. But it may be what I have to deal with today. We deal with it. We deal with it. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that black. So y'all, at least for eyeliner, waterproof eyeliner, don't mess with the Swispers. I'm still in the process of testing those things out, so. And we're gonna get that black eyeshadow that I was using before. And I'm putting that on my lower lash line on the other eye too. Cause I want it to be at least somewhat even, after all. Don't want it to look too off. Probably look more like goth. Ooh, goth. Gothic look. <laughs> Cause I mean, back in the 90s, whenever I was growing up, this was really popular, doing a heavy lower liner and all that. I mean, this was popular. But to me, it just don't look right on me. I'm going to take my Peacock Flare Mascara here, and I'm going to coat my coat my lashes here in a moment. And but first, I'm taking my lash curler. You can get a lash curler from Elf. You can get one from Revlon. I mean, almost anywhere. Shoot, you can even get one from the Dollar Tree. A lash curler. You take that, and you want to curl those lashes really good. Now, if you want to, you can even heat it up. If your lashes are really stubborn and don't like to curl, you can heat it up like using a hair dryer real quick, like 30 seconds. But make sure you touch it a little bit and make sure it's not too hot before you put it on the eye because the eye is very sensitive. But curl those girls. Let's curl those girls. Curl, curl, curl the girls. For doing lashes, I'm gonna have this in my upcoming lash, you know, liner and lash video. The trick to doing it is you take them and you clamp on your lashes and then you arc it up or out rather. You don't want to do just hold, sit there and hold it in one clamp because otherwise you're gonna have one clamp right in the middle of your lashes and it's not gonna look as natural. But you clamp it and you pump it open, close, open, close, open, close as you're pulling your hand out from your lashes and up and that will help curl curl your lashes a little more so but right here is the peacock flare mascara i believe this is in waterproof i believe and i'm gonna put some mascara on now you don't want to go with a really lengthening mascara. I'm not a fan of this anyway because it doesn't do a whole lot of lengthening for me. That right there is mascara on. Okay. Oops. Lost my glasses for a second, y'all. But I'm gonna put the glasses on to show you what it looks like real quick. This is without the next 
the last two steps done. This is just glasses. The next to last step, I mean, because your lips, yes, your lips do play a big part of this as well, but this step that I'm about to tell you is to me one of the most important steps besides lips, and that is, or and uh, powdering your nose, but brows. I have read so much about go more bold on your brows, because if you notice here, my brows are just above my glasses, and if I would wear them down like this, because whenever I'm going walking somewhere and I'm wanting to wear my glasses, I will wear them further down sometimes. <laughs> but my brows are just above my glasses and they frame, they, hey, they frame my frames. <laughs> my brows frame my frames, especially if I arc my brows up a little bit. But that's why it is so important to do your brows. Check them off, and I'm just using the Wet n Wild pencil here because this is darker than I typically use. Now then, one thing I like to do if this if it's a pencil pencil like this one is, I like to make sure it's good and sharp. Anytime I do liner or anything like that, I try to make sure my pencil is nice and sharp. But. And one trick for your lashes, by the way, is if you, you if you don't mind using a waterproof mascara, it will help hold that curl more so they're not as likely to fall flat. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows here. I'm just doing a real light. The further down you hold on the pencil, the lighter the pressure will be. So I'm holding real lightly with two fingers and I'm just drawing them in a little bit, filling them in rather evening them up. I know I might look completely insane right now, but whenever things are behind glasses, they look a little different. You know, it's not as insane as whenever you don't have glasses on. So, at least that's my opinion. I'm going to use the shade Rebel Rose by Wet n Wild. It's a liquid cat suit lipstick. Now if you want a neutral lipstick, this right here is a good one. This is more of a mauve tone. <laughs> but I'm taking this and putting it on my lips. Now I went more neutrally on my lips. Now you could do another lipstick like um, the Berry Recognize one from Wet n Wild. I do have that as well. Now I've done that before in combination like while well, this is still wet, mix the two. Now that's actually pretty too. But this right here is the actual look. Let me show you what it looks like all put together. Here are the glasses. Alright, thank y'all so much for watching this video. I do hope that you subscribe. If you want me to do more of an evening night glasses look, like a date night look, uh, a special occasion type look, let me know in the comments down below because I can do a darker, more sultry eyeglasses look. You know, if you would like that. So let me know in the comments down below if that's something you would like to see. Because, as you can tell, this is with glasses, without. With 
without. So, you know. Let me know if you want to see that. And also, please join me over on Facebook. I have a Blind Beauty Support Facebook page where we talk about all things affordable beauty. As well as, I post like little ideas I'm working on and things like that to get y'all's input. So I do hope you join me over there. I also have a Blind Beauty Facebook page, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. And I also have a WordPress where I try to, or I'm working on putting my calendar up for about a month at a time. So you can check that out as well. All my links will be right down below. And I hope to talk to y'all very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.